Dogman, the canine cryptid we've all come to know and fear. It's midnight and you're here. You must be a part of the Midnight Lycanthropy Club. I'm one of your hosts, Brooke. Kenny will be joining us soon. Tonight, we're going to be discussing the infamous Dog Man in Italy. We're also going to be discussing if some of the missing 411 cases were possibly connected to Dog Man. Don't forget to hit that like button, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We do upload these podcasts every Thursday at 12 a.m. Now, without further ado, sit back, relax, while me and Kenny share some midnight lycanthropy. Did you see the size of them Paul prints? He was in the graveyard saying some strange chant. Oh, hell no. She said the creature kept trying to open her bedroom window. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Midnight Lycanthropy. I'm one of your hosts, Brooke, and this is my other host, Kenny. Hi, Kenny! Hello, 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 friends. (laughs) Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking, of course, about Dogman. And, um... Some of the missing 411 cases that have been uh, kind of around this dog man area. <laughs> and um, also, we're going to be talking a little about dog man in Italy. Right, Kimmy? Yes, ma'am. This is, this is the factual side right there. Wow. I've never heard of the dog man in Italy, so I'm actually uh, pumped for today's show. Um, so let's yeah, go no, ahead and um, dive. Oh, go ahead. They they definitely uh, have been spotted globally uh, for sure. Um, it's not just like a United States thing or a European thing. They're definitely, as I had previously mentioned, pretty much in every continent and country across the world. I've had a uh, documentation of uh, dogman type like creatures. So. Yeah, that is super awesome. I've just never heard. Of them, I mean, I assumed that they were everywhere, but it's kind of cool that we get to hear the stories from Italy today, and um, really interesting uh, stuff on the four one one cases. I can't wait to get to that too. <laughs> Everybody likes talking about the crime stuff, so yeah, no, definitely, that's uh, all kind of ties into. Hand in hand, I mean, actually, one of the encounters we're going to dive uh, into in Italy occurred up in uh, the mountain range near a bunch of cave systems as well, which kind of, uh, again, translates back to um, in the United States where people are going missing near cave systems and national forests and things uh, along those lines. So the first um, encounter that I was actually recently updated about occurred on August 2020 in the province of Siena, Italy. A local farmer is outside at night finishing up his work for the day. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a huge, enormous, dark, black, human-like bipedal wolf creature darts out of the darkness and viciously grabs the man's arm in an attempt to carry him off to straight doom. Freaking out, he grabs his pitchfork that was right beside him. I mean, same that'd probably be the best option right and then he begins jabbing the animal with it consistently uh the animal began screaming out in pain and violently threw him down to the ground as it ran off into the distance the man quickly jumps up runs home and calls the police department they stop over and when they came over there was a large bite marks and scratch marks all over the guy's clothing and body and there was blood all at the area where he was initially attacked as well and um they the police said that the scratch marks looked like large uh bipedal like hand-like type claw marks something that would have been Oof. standing up when it swiped down yeah Ooh, hell no to that oh my gosh so this <laughs> thing actually grabbed his arm like, yeah, he was uh, raking and using his pitchfork and just, you know, like I think he was seeding his field or finishing up for the day. And, yeah, um, it just literally grabbed him by his arm and he turned and it started yanking like him away. And he reached for his pitchfork and just started jamming it into it. 
Holy crap. Yeah, I've never um it's it's a it's rare to hear them get physical with a person, right? Like usually people just spot them from the distance and you know um, you, you, yeah, I would say like the majority, but you have you do have a bunch of cases. I mean, you have uh the case that Jan Thompson reported uh, of her cousin potentially getting ripped off his motorbike in the forest and mm -hmm. he had five claw digit, uh, digit scratch marks on his leg and, and this was near a uh, Tennessee Kentucky area um you have another gentleman that said it tried to grab his leg and pull him off so I mean uh and then you have like the little kids saying that it picked him up and carried him away and things like that so um yeah I mean uh, a lot of the cases are more you know simple kind of uh, just eyewitness type stuff but you do definitely have the cases of uh the brutality of you know the throwing the dogs through the windows and things like that mm -hmm. yeah i do remember that story that's one story that always sticks out in my head that poor doggo holy yeah, man. i'd be mad i'd be chasing after the dog man if that happened like i'm sorry no uh, not today you're facing me there's there's yeah, no, no way, way. Heck, but you're getting away <laughs> with that <laughs> Yeah, that was some uh, definitely nightmare fuel. That one's uh, from Brian Barber's mother uh, in Nuego. So that was uh, Nuego, Michigan. Pretty creepy stuff. And then back to uh, Italy, the second encounter. <clears throat> Let's see how bad I can botch this word right here. So oh, no. Janu January 14th, 2021, Parco Nazionale del Gran Sasso e Monte della Laga, Italy, which is a mountain range. A group of hikers are deep within the mountains enjoying their afternoon. Suddenly, they notice an enormous six to eight foot tall bipedal smoke gray human-like wolf creature leaning out from some rocks, looking as if it was potentially trying to ambush them. Once they noticed the animal, they said it became extremely agitated as it ran off in the opposite direction. And they ran back to the nearest warden station and had explained uh, their encounter. And the game wardens went back to the area and found large tufts of uh, smoke gray fur on the rocks where the thing was like uh, rubbing itself up against it and then also in the area where they had seen it standing and also as it retreated off into some sandy type uh, area they found large enormous canine like footprints wow that is crazy well i tell you, you said that that word better than i did <laughs> <laughs> I can't even begin to pronounce that, but <laughs> yeah, that's so, so long. Like translation into English, that's their version of saying like their national park. Um, it's just oh, yeah. okay. So that's gotcha. national LA and national. So yeah, it's a uh, basically <laughs> no different than like a park here, um, and the same thing. So you got those people over there as well that are having those uh, interactions in those type of areas. So those are two of the. More recent ones that um, I was informed of from uh, Italy. I've actually had Deborah Hatswell told me about those. Uh, I've heard uh, Mark Tessier from Midnight Century talk about some of those cases and stuff like that. So, I mean, they uh, there's definitely some other people out there that had um, heard about those cases and things like that. But, yeah, no, recently I had spoken to Deborah and she uh, sent me a ton of stuff. So. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. I do. I like her. She's a, she's got a good storytelling voice too, like Carol Ann. And I like yeah, she's, it better. She's great. She's, she's a legend. Yeah, yeah, she's a legend. She's been doing it for shoot thirty years now. Yeah, that's yeah, that's freaking awesome. I would like to uh, get up with her sometime on this podcast and. Yeah, I, no, I she, think it'd be awesome. I do want to get her on for sure, and I know she wants to speak to both of us. I just know she's been uh, still kind of beat up from the whole COVID thing, and also. Um, she's been pretty, pretty backed up on stuff to be quite honest. Yeah. With you. Yeah. I can, I can totally understand that for sure. And she she seems like she stays busy with the dog man stuff, but it's got, she's got really good content too. Yeah, she has, she covers so, so much stuff. So yeah, she, yeah. uh, I think she was saying she's still, oh man, doing cases or trying to get out cases from like 2019, 20 certain aspects. So. That's why um, I try to only focus, yeah, only focus on the dog man because it's not hard enough for me to stay up to date on that type of stuff. So being able to potentially have to cover um, all those other uh, cases and do it correctly, I just don't think I would be able to stay caught up either. Yeah, like it, it's it's hard just like editing and like going one by one. Like that's how I try to do it, just one by one. You know, that's all you can yeah. do. Do you have any more? Cases for yeah, you? so um, at the moment, I 
don't off the top of my head if I pop my book open, I might, but those were the two most recent ones I had uh, okay. had a chance to dive into and cover. Um, I mean, there's also a ton of other ones I have from England, France, Spain. So, I mean, we definitely have some more stuff if we ever do want to dive into European uh, dog man or werewolf lore. There is uh, definitely yeah, a definitely ton love of that. that. Now, these 411, the missing 411 cases. Yes. Let's dive into that a little bit. What can you so, tell me with this? You have David Politis, who, um, you know, he does he does some really good work, but also kind of doesn't really enjoy outside interaction. So he plays basically in his own puddle, meaning that uh, someone like you or myself could have pretty important information and he won't speak to us because he doesn't want outside information. Um, and mm -hmm. also there's been some times where he has basically kind of changed the narrative um, about some stuff, meaning that not the narrative, but just basically leaving out certain details to make it fall more into his criteria. But he, as I said, does amazing work. And if you look at through the areas that a lot of the cases that he's covered, they fall definitively into dogman territory and dogman areas where uh, people are going missing. And just recently, actually, uh, near Mount Baldy in California, um, a 22-year-old woman just went missing. She was hiking by herself and then just never returned. They uh, sent out a massive search party to try to find her. And when they did find her, she was in an area that was extremely inaccessible. And uh, they just basically said her body was mangled, but that was it. And they had no more information to, uh, or they obviously did, but they didn't want to release any more to the public. Um, so that was actually just recently that occurred. Um, so when you look into those areas, uh, which I've thrown up some of the maps and things like that, they all line up to like the known cave systems. Um, and the national parks are over a lot of those cave systems as well. So when you start to see how uh, the people are going missing in those mysterious ways, um, and then you start digging into the lore of the area and then you start to hear maybe a couple days before someone vanished or the day they vanished other people in the area had seen uh, upright bipedal dog-like creatures um so it's i definitely am a firm believer that they uh, are a large reason why people are going missing yeah i mean it it can't all just be coincidence right like some of those have to have to line up with dog man because if they're in the in the area it only makes sense so you have to, yeah, and also, uh, you know, with animal predation and things like that, there's always a sign of struggle. So, I mean, if you were attacked by a bear, there's going to be blood everywhere, and uh, they're going to dig a hole and throw you in there for your cash, basically. And then if they do defecate around the area, clothing and stuff is still found within their uh, scat and things like that. But, um, you know, so there are definitely ways uh, that, you know, predators can be figured out. I mean, a mountain lion would probably drag you up a tree so there'd be still a trail of blood and things like that. So the fact when people just straight up go missing, um, sure, some of them could have fallen down into a cave somewhere or things like that, but um, it's kind of harrowing when you see the amount of people that are going uh, missing in those areas. And then, like I said, you look at the documented aspects and then you also uh, speak to other people. It kind of all definitely adds up. It's creepy. Man, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't think I want to go hiking anywhere near those areas, to be honest. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I mean, you have, like I was, like we talked about last time on the Sinocephali, two, uh, 290 BC. I mean, these things have been around. So those were uh, found in extremely forested areas uh, near Greece and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's there. And, it's definitely super creepy, and um, like I said, uh, the Greeks and Herodas and all of them said that those uh, Sinocephali dog people lived in the forest, but they had like their own kind of little villages and things like that, so it's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, do you have any other stories from the missing 411 cases that relate to dog man? Um, pretty much I've covered at least 10 to 12 of those, maybe more that fall into that category. Um, in my opinion, like the one I did tell you about Mount Baldy, um, that was potentially one that could have fallen into that category. 
Uh, and then, I mean, you have Bart Slizer, uh, who went missing in the Yukon Territory, and he was a world-renowned survivalist, and he uh, was actually paid to track down grizzly bears and put on uh, tracking collars, and he also was uh, invited over to Siberia to help uh, figure out the Siberian tiger population, and there's pictures of him uh, in the actual den playing with the cubs while the mother was out um, like hunting and things like that. So this this guy is, uh, literally understands all apex predators and stuff. Like he he hunts them, uh, not like not hunts them, but like you know you know what I mean. So um, that's what he was paid to do and stuff. Uh, so fast forward, he went on a vacation uh, to go hunting on his own in the Yukon Territory, <clears throat> and uh, he just vanished. And his friends went back to the area to try to find him. Couldn't find him. His uh, campsite had a bunch of rations and food in it, but no animals had come there to take the rest of it, which is super strange. And then they had noticed he had an inflatable raft down the river a little bit that he was by, and they realized that potentially he had gone down to that area. So after uh, the Canadian Royal Mounted Police basically said that the case was closed, it was a bear attack, uh, his friends didn't agree with that and went back. And then when they found that boat, or the inflatable raft, and they checked around the area. They ended up finding um, small bone fragments that ended up being um, belonging to Bart, but they also found uh, like a bag that he was sitting on, basically probably scoping out an area. And then his uh, bow and arrow was just leaning up against the side of the tree. And uh, a little bit further away in the area, they found some bloody clothing and also... Um, pair of his goggles that had some like blood uh, splatter on it but they never found any uh, anything else of the guy and keep in mind wow. he yeah he was a world renowned survivalist uh hunter tracker and yeah he just vanished craziness and they they did find like the blood on his goggles and stuff so yep. you knew something something happened something got him but i mean what I mean, what would have snuck up on him? I mean, like I said, this guy sneaks up on grizzly bears. He sneaks up on Siberian tigers and things like that. So, I mean, really makes yeah, you think know. what. It and also, been that or a person, like, you know, it, these people, people are it, crazy. It, it definitely <laughs> could. It, it definitely could uh, be a person for sure. Um, but at the same time, it, it it's. It's, I don't know, like his family says, it's really hard to believe that anyone would have snuck up on him like that, that he wouldn't have been aware of it. And, um, yeah, t so just to vanish like that. And, I mean, you, yeah, obviously people that go out to areas like that are trying to get away from society, which would mean also criminals and people like that are going to, you know, potentially go out into areas like that. But mm -hmm. there still would have been a sign of, I mean, so if a person did kill him, why did they leave all his food at his uh at his tent area. Why didn't they take his bow and arrow? Like it's, it just doesn't, I don't know. True. I don't and, know. And Maybe they, I have no, you know, it's, it's hard to tell. It could have been, but I mean, these dog men and stuff and Sasquatch and cryptids in general, they cloak themselves. And so would you really be able to hear a dog man sneaking up on you like that? I don't think so. Ah, uh, I mean, it, I guess, it really kind of would depend, um, I guess. So when I look at like the cloaking and stuff like that, like I had said to you before, I look at that as kind of like a large, like a large cat or something. If you see like a tiger or a puma making its way through the grass, it can flatten itself out really good near the ground and stuff like that. Um, but you, so, I mean, you, you wouldn't potentially be able to see it, but to be aware of apex predators, you're going to be aware of that. Um, you're going to, I just feel like you're going to always know that something could be just crouching down. So I feel like someone like that probably doesn't let down their guard too much. Um, and also at the campsite, like I said, where nothing, like none of the food was taken and a ton of dogman encounters, uh, no animals or insects ever go near like the dogman kill. Like the corpse just sits there and rots away. Um, mm. So that, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's definitely super, super interesting. Um, I, I would say, when people, I guess, want to use more of the terminology of like the cloaking, like say Halo or something like that with like the Covenant, I again would say that would probably, in my eyes, fall underneath uh, the Skinwalker, um, Werewolf, and Wendigo type category. Um, I think 
just as I had said before with the dog, man, I mean, people have shine flashlights in their face. They yelp. That guy shot, like, hit it with a pitchfork. Someone else has mm -hmm. shot it, blew off a piece of its chest. Uh, other people have sprayed bear spray in its face. Other people have like honked their horn and shined their uh, high beams in its face. I read their engine at it. it. didn't like the loud noise. It banged on the hood and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, I, I definitely think it, they, they are still going to have those animal characteristics, I guess. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it, it could have, I mean, obviously something snuck up on them and grabbed them, but mm -hmm. it's, it, it's just super strange that, I mean, I would assume a Siberian tiger would be just as stealthy or if not more stealthy than a dog, man. I mean, how many times do people see those in general over the last 30 years? Not much. You know I mean? You have a couple of videos yeah. of people, people have caught those and stuff like that on camera, but I th I'm pretty sure the Siberian tiger is one of the more uh, stealthy, hard to capture on camera animals and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, any predator just for the most part, unless it, I don't know, grizzly bears and things like that, because they know they're dominant, don't really disguise themselves as much. But I mean, female lions disguise themselves, wolves, uh, pumas, um, tigers. I mean, a tiger is an apex predator, but it still hides in the grass. Like it doesn't just uh, come barreling from like 30 yards away at you. It hits you and you're not paying attention. Whereas a grizzly bear might just bust out of the woods and come charging at you. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely pretty pretty interesting but i would say i would probably uh think the dog man would tend to have more um more sleepness and uh able to be undetected more like a cat um i would say probably yeah yeah like laying them like you said like the physical attribute of stealthing like yes yes yeah <laughs> of laying down flat and stuff like that i totally get it and i mean i like without with me believing i believe the dog man is well, I believe some of them are just physical, but I believe there are ones that are, well, heck, I don't know. I mean, I guess it would be labeled as a dog man. Like, I, I believe there are some supernatural kind ones that do go invisible, like the Bigfoot and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. That's just what I believe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I mean, it's not like I've never witnessed. I have never witnessed one, so... Neither have I, my friend. So I'm just going off of, uh, you know, historical reports and also um, just information that's being sent to me and speaking to eyewitnesses and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, that's uh, definitely good. I mean, if you're also able to bring any sort of uh, really good credence to that topic or that uh, thought process, definitely let me know so that I can uh, potentially sit down and try to uh, look at it through that eye as well. And um see if we can't build off of the information that's already out there for sure yeah it's this i mean it's nothing i can really prove it's just more of a feeling and going by the dif the different stories and stuff like that but who knows i mean everything is just so mysterious like the whole cryptid thing like in in general is just well in fact it's just creepy <laughs> you know no, i mean 100 percent, 100 percent the underground stuff, like I believe in a lot of the underground cryptids and stuff like that. It's just, it's sometimes almost overwhelming what we don't know. I mean, think about the ocean. We've only, what, 10%, 50, whatever percent of our ocean we've only discovered. And I mean, and we still are finding new species on the daily. I know it's crazy. We know more about outer space, excuse me, outer space than on the ocean, but then we have already polluted the ocean. I remember recently someone uh, put some cameras down at the, some of the deepest spots in the ocean. And it was like plastic bags everywhere and stuff is terrible. Oh. But yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that's, uh, that's definitely very true. And that's how I try to uh, approach everything. It's just, like I said, uh, I'm not one day ever think I know everything and things like that. I'm always just trying to learn and also uh, just presenting what's been presented to me and stuff like that. And also what um, other people that I respect their opinion um, believe is potentially occurring as well. And then I try to step back and make some of my own opinions as well. Yeah, definitely. And that's how you should. I think that's how everybody should be in life. Like never stop learning. There's so many people out here yes. that think that they just stop learning. Like, no, you hey, yeah, that's a no, that's a terrible way to go amongst it, like you said. Yeah, it's just it's actually uh, sad to, uh, to yes, it people is that, that don't have an open mind to this kind of stuff because I, you know, it's real. It's a hundred percent real. 
and not every case is real. You know, there are some hoaxes out there, unfortunately, you know, people trying to fool people. And, yeah, the bamboozles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it happens to the best the ones of us. For their own gain, you know, and, you know, that's their prerogative, but. It's it's you know, okay to be wrong and, and get bamboozled. Right. It's just uh it's not okay to then take that evidence and, and still preach that it's real and stuff like that. I mean, we've all been bamboozled. I've had numerous times where I've uh, taken things out of potential evidence and put them into fakes and things like that. Once I've been able to get a better understanding as to, you know, what's occurring on it and stuff like that. But there's a, yeah, that, that's part of a life and part of learning and things like that. Trial and error. Like, you know, some, some of these things I honestly don't know, like the things that I react to on my YouTube channel, you know, I've believed some of the hoaxes to be real, you know, until somebody said, oh, that's somebody in a costume. Yes. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's it happens to and, everybody. I mean, there's no, I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be upset about that. I mean, and plus like, you oh, said, not, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people do, uh, you know, uh, forget sometimes I am just a reaction channel and I reiterate that. a little bit overboard with <laughs> it. To but. Reiterate that. Tell them, like, look, if you want to hear more things that are documented and that have been verified, then tune into our podcast. But, you know, um, I do reactions as my normal stuff. So, I mean, people should understand that. Yeah. It's just sometimes I don't. But that, you know, that's that's them and you know of course no definitely people just be people (laughs) so (laughs) facts all right everybody this has been another star fox media and brookster production we are glad and always thankful for everyone that does stop in and hang out with us it's been another great episode this is your favorite vampire from the North American Dogman Project. I will try to put out potentially another video this week, as I did speak during this episode. I am going to try to focus on that more. I've just been over, uh, I wouldn't use the word overwhelmed, but just uh, trying to get caught up on images that I screwed up and um, gathering and filtering through some evidence and encounters. But uh, don't worry, I won't be going anywhere and sooner than later i'll be able to get out content more consistently so uh thanks for stopping by and make sure everyone stays safe out there and realize and beware of the dog man okay everybody thanks for stopping by we'll see you next time bye well everyone what did you think of tonight's episode let us know in the comments below wolfpack have you ever seen a cryptid a bigfoot a dog man let us know in the comments, or you can also email me. I'm going to throw my email up right now so you can send it to me and I'll share your stories. Thanks for all your support, guys. We really do appreciate it. Make sure you go over and give Kenny some love on his channel too, okay? I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. And until the next time, guys, bye!